if you don't mind, I, I require uh, four minutes and 53 seconds of your time, <laughs> uh, starting now. I'm asked to, just, to talk briefly about the new markets tax credit and how that works. So I thought the best way to do it would be to contrast it against what we already know about the, the uh, low-income housing tax credit. So we have investors at the top thinking about a return on investment. They have tax liability that they would like to offset with some kind of a tax credit. So in uh, affordable housing, there's an incentive to contribute capital that helps construct affordable housing, and in return, it generates what we call low-income housing tax credits. Now, on the other side, there's an incentive to invest in low-income community businesses. So it's an investment in communities on the commercial side. That's what generates what we call new markets tax credits. Both of those flow up. A tax credit is a tax credit, and uh, it will offset the tax liability, make the investors happy, of course. So on the uh, affordable housing side, on the low-income housing tax credit, say we have a, just for round numbers' sake, uh, a $20 million project and what we know about eligible basis and applicable fractions and calculating that. Let's say that it produces $15 million in low-income housing tax credits. So in order for the investor thinking, all right, I want to pay $0.67 cents per credit, rounds out to an another nice round number for, for this purpose. But that means they would send down about $10 million in equity, and in exchange, they would be able to claim $15 million in low-income housing tax credits. Now, we know that the compliance period is 15 years. However, the credits are accelerated over 10 years. Uh, so when we talk about recapture events with low-income housing tax credits, typically the credits in danger of recapture are those that are accelerated, and even then, it'll be uh, proportionate to units that are out of compliance. Uh, for the new markets tax credit, it's just a 39% tax credit, so 39% of the investment that the investor makes. So they will make a, say, instead of $10 million towards low-income housing, let's say they, they make $10 million instead to uh, new markets tax credits. So they will contribute to what's called a community development entity, and then the CDE, finds qualified low-income community businesses to make loans to. And that's, that's what keeps the rules, I guess, of, of this program. So they make the $10 million equity investment, and so 39% of the $10 million is $3.9 million. Some of you are looking and saying, wait a second, if I go $10 million on low income, I get $15 million in tax credits back. If I go $10 million on new markets, I only get 3.9. Why would anybody want to do 3.9? Well, if the $10 million is not all your money, and you get someone else to loan you $7 million, and then you only put in $3 million of your own, all of a sudden 3.9 represents a decent return on investment. So that's where the math comes in. So unlike the low-income housing tax credit, the new markets tax credit is earned and claimed over uh, seven years total. So in the first three years, you get 5% of the investment, and in years four through seven, you get 6% each year for a grand total of 39% of your investment. Now the interesting thing here is also unlike the low-income housing tax credit, uh, if there's a recapture event, it's 100% recapture of all your tax credits. So it's a little different ballgame. So we have uh, two separate tax credits. Of all the tax credits that can be paired up with one another, historic and low-income and solar, the two most difficult are the new markets and the, uh, the residential. I'd say nigh impossible. Uh, who would ever do that? Because one's residential and one's commercial. They were not meant to be together. In fact, for those of us who are familiar with low-income housing, we've seen what's called mixed-use projects, where you have residential and you have commercial space, and we know that commercial is not included in your eligible basis. But wouldn't it be great if we could get low-income housing tax credits on the residential rental, and then we could get new markets tax credits on the commercial. You know, even top it off, why not put some solar panels on top of that thing and uh, get investment tax credits? Uh, at a certain point, that's where the technicality comes in and you see the ultimate challenge is there's a provision with the new markets tax credit that says residential rental is not qualified for this. And you think, well, okay, then it, game over. We can't, we can't do it. The same ownership entity cannot take advantage of both the new markets and the LIHTC. The inability to combine the new markets and the LIHTC in the same ownership entity was one of the reasons that drove us to the separate ownership of the panels. That's what makes that feasible. So, Right. So it's the, the entity that qualified for the new market tax credit investment was the solar vehicle that owned the solar panels. It wasn't the recipient of the new market tax credit loan wasn't the low-income housing tax credit partnership. It was the partnership that owned the panels. You got it.